Hi, so today is about my 2021 beauty favorites. Well, beauty is just uh, makeup. Let's start with um, complexion. So for primer, even though I sometimes do use it, primer is just not part of my makeup routine. I find most of them don't do much for me. So I will just start with foundation. The first one would be this ColourPop Pretty Fresh um, Hyaluronic Acid Tinted Moisturizer. If it's not for the COVID, I don't think this one would be my favorite. Because only by how it applies to the skin, which is very, very nice, but it's not like it's nicer than every tinted moisturizer. But the thing for this one is it lasts very long. For a tinted moisturizer, it lasts super long. Even with mask on, I can still see it stay on my face very well, not sinking into my pores, not moving too much, even after hours when I wear a mask. And that's why I loved this one so much for this year, because when I am going to wear a mask and wearing makeup underneath that mask, this one is kind of my one of my must-have for my base. So I really do love this one. I think it's just for how it applies and how it lasts. Overall, this is the best and the most I enjoyed this year. And another foundation I really loved is the Suku the Cream Foundation. And this foundation is the one that I will use when I really want my foundation to last and also when my skin is not at the best condition. Like sometimes I have some dry patches and some breakout or some texture and this is one of the only foundations that I found will cover the texture. Which I think if you have a, like more experience on makeup, you would understand that it's very easy for foundation to cover up the colors, like discoloration, like your acne scars. Those things are very easy to cover by your foundation. But if you have texture issues, most of the time the foundation will emphasize on your texture. It's very, very hard to find a foundation that will actually cover your texture. And this one does for me. And also it lasts very long and also it's moisturizing. So it's just everything for this foundation I love. It's um, set to glowy finish, which I love. It's a light to medium coverage, but you do can um, layer it to uh, like not a full full coverage, but a medium to full kind of coverage, which I do like. I like the foundation that's buildable. And also it never looks heavy. Even if you apply two layers, it looks like just like your skin. And I love that. And also my skin, I have quite large pores. A lot of the foundation like sink into my skin not sink into, sink into my pores, and sometimes it moves around. But this foundation don't do that. As a lightweight dewy foundation, it stays into place super nicely. And sometimes I even find I don't have to set this with powder to have it last. It just stays super natural and covers super beautifully and last at the same time. And I, I never find a foundation that quite do all of those for me. And this one does. So I really, really love this foundation. Actually, they have two formulas prior to this one. Those two don't even come close to this one. So they did a fantastic job on formulating this foundation. Concealer. Actually, I am not a very big concealer person because I find most of the time 
foundation is just uh, doing enough job for me. So I use them, but I use them very like sparingly, and sometimes I even skip concealer I used the most. It probably would be the RMS one because I was trying to use that one up. But there isn't a really a favorite favorite concealer. And powder is this three powder. I think Project Pan really helped me to rediscover a lot of my favorite and this is one of those. As you can see, I am definitely finishing this one up. It is the perfect powder for me where it doesn't add a very thick layer to your face, but still it sets your face very nicely and also it makes your makeup last longer and controls the oil without drying up your skin. So it's like the powder that is really doing everything for me. I have a lot of powders. I think I have over 50 or even 60 powders in my collection. So I don't think I will repurchase this one anytime soon. But if I can use up some of my powders and if I really consider to repurchase some powder, this would be the first one on the repurchase li list. Let's talk about some other colored face products. The Soleil Detente Chanel. And it's the old formula. I didn't try the new one, so I don't know if the new one is good or not. I heard it's not as good as the old one. I enjoy this formula a lot, a lot. It never gets an even patchy on me, no matter how, like, sometimes I don't even look at mirror, I just smear it on with some bigger, fluffier brush, and it just looks perfect every time. And that's what I look for um, bronzer, especially cream bronzer. It's uh, blending beautifully, and the color is right, and that's all I ask for. I really do enjoy using this bronzer for the most part of this year. For blush, this really is a blush ear where I think everybody has a obsession for blush and a lot of uh, brands came out with a lot of blushes, especially cream blush. So I do have two favorite for cream blush. Tower 28 Beach Please in the shade Golden Hour. It's a orange colored one. What I love about this is even though it's a very intense color and sometimes when you put it on your face, initially you feel like, oh my god, that's too much. But when you blend it, it actually blends to I won't say like sheer it out too much, but it blends into a way that you can see the blush is like quite intense, but it don't look too intense. It's like you can see the color blending very nicely. That's why I love this formula because a lot of time I feel like other cream blushes is only very intense where you initially put the product down and it's not spreading out very nicely. I love my blush to be a very wide area, but very blended. And this gives that to me. It blends in a very wide area, very evenly, and it just adds a like very nice sheer color to your face. Also, the color. I really love this color, even though it looks like a very, very intense orange. It blends into a peachy, pinky kind of very fresh color on my cheek, which I really like. Another cream blush, I think this is released in 2021, is the LYS. I think it's Love Yourself. I'm, I'm not sure. Higher standard satin matte cream blush in shade Kindness. It's my perfect pinky, peachy kind of blush color. Like, I think these two blended out 
it it looks a little bit um similar, but this one is a little bit more intense and a little bit more orange. And this one is those kind of color that it bring a little bit freshness to your cheek, which I really like, and it works very nicely on my light medium olive skin tone. It could be very difficult for olive undertone to choose blush. For me, a lot of times a blush is either too cool toned or too warm toned. It's either too red or too yellowy. And this one is very nice in between of those where it's not too red and it's not too orange that it looks like a little bit too yellowy on your cheek that looks makes you look a little sick sometimes. I, I just really love this color and also the formula is super nice. It's more of a firmer kind of cream. It's really like it said, it's satin matte cream. It's not matte, but I think it's just a satin finish cream blush where it blends super nicely. I never struggle to blend when I use this product. It, I think it just blends on itself. I A part of me want to try another shade from this range, but a part of me feel like there just isn't another shade that will be more perfect for me than this. For powder blushes, Clinic Nude Pulp. Since I purchased this blush, I basically use it non-stop. Like you can see, I hit pan on this this year. It's just a blush that I can never fail on it. No matter what kind of makeup I do, what kind of um, you know mood I am in, this always look good on me. It looks like a nude blush, but it's more of like a peachy nude. Works on my olive skin tone super nicely. And the pigmentation is more of like a sheer pigmentation, but it's beautiful, very easy to control. So. Overall, it's just a very good formula and a very good color. I really, really love this blush for years. And there's also a newly found powder blush in this year. is from Kenmake. It's a Japanese drugstore brand. And I believe this is super uh, affordable. Around $8, I think. Maybe even cheaper. I, I don't remember. It is a fully matte, which is not the trend on last year, but I do really love this one because it's not a very heavy kind of matte formula. It's more of a very lightweight matte formula that it don't covers up your glow on your skin. It just don't add any uh, glowiness. So sometimes if I am not uh, fully setting my complexion, this blush still let out some of the glowiness even from my skincare or my, from my foundation. Reddish kind of blush don't work very well on my olive skin tone, but this one is the reddish blush that I can use. It's a healthy, peachy reddish kind of color that it just looks so nice on my skin. I really really love this one and also other lighter colors I think it do serves a purpose because I find if I focus my brush on the center and make sure I dabbed a little bit around this center color as well the blush just blend so effortlessly and it looks like it has dimension on itself because how the powder is. I love everything about it. Um, For highlight, it's a category that I really enjoy, that I really love, but it's also a category that I never find one product that is not replaceable. But I do have three that I kind of loved on the later half of the year, but not throughout the whole year, is this three. 
And this three is all in my project pan, and it's in the project pan for a reason, because I love all three of these, and I use this three all at once. So it's like a three-step highlighting routine, which is definitely unnecessary, but I enjoy doing it. Firstly, I will put down this Melt uh, Stargazer highlight. This is the highlight that's very smoothing. A lot of highlight really emphasize your texture, but this one does not. It's a smoothing, but it's a more of a subtle baking kind of formula that I find if someday I really want a super, super intense highlight, this one does not give it, give it to me. It's a nice, sheer, subtle highlight that you can put on a very wide area of your face. So that's why I put it down first. Then I will put down this Dior highlight. This is the uh, nude luminizer in shade 9. It's a limited edition one. It's the pinky color. This one at first I didn't really like it because it's too pink to use on the high points of your face as a highlight but also it's not pinky enough or pigmented enough as a blush and also it's a little bit too intense for you to use as a blush topper <laughs> so it's like what I really use it for so for the longest time I didn't find how to use this product but Right after that, I find a way that I really, really enjoy this product, which is actually a very specific use. I just blend a very, very little amount on this area. It blends my blush and my highlight together. It adds a little bit of freshness to my cheek because it's a more of a light pink and it adds a little bit of glow on this area and because of the formula it doesn't really emphasize the pores on this area it just adds a little bit of glow which is very pretty and i am wearing this one today on this area the all the glow you can see on this area and the subtle pinkness on this area is from this highlight i do really love this one and the third one is this white and wild mega glow highlight highlighting powder in the shade bloom time i believe this was released a very very long time ago maybe even three or four years ago when it first launched i picked it up and i enjoyed for a very very long time the embossing on this center part was all gone. As well as I remember, that period of time is when very intense highlight really on trend. The last year, most of people wasn't even enjoying product like this, including me. But the recent like three months, I find myself more craving a very very intense highlight. Formula is super nice. It's very smooth as like for how intense it is you can even use it as an eyeshadow that's how intense it is it almost looks metallic and my way of using it is layering um, <laughs> this to highlight only put this on the highest point with my finger so my placement is first I will take some on my finger and I will put it on this area like this and I will blend it out I find actually with your finger you have a better control over your highlight and also I actually put it at this area like the corner of my eye I just do it like this and I blend it into the highlight that's on my cheek and I'm not sure if you can see but it just creates this like whole area of 
highlight that look very dewy and beautiful. Last complexion product is this setting spray. It's the Dior Forever Perfect Fix Set Fresh Hydrate. <laughs> it's a very long name. This is released in the... I think it's in the middle of the year and I really really love this product. This is one of the only setting spray that really sets my makeup. Like my makeup just don't move when I use this one. Even if I wear mask for like four, five, sometimes even over 10 hours, my makeup is still in place when I using this one. And if I don't use this one and I wear mask over my makeup for like over two hours, there will be like makeup all over my mask. But with this one, I won't say no no makeup will get onto my mask, but I think it reduced 90% of the smudge onto the mask, which is impressive. I find no other setting spray do the same job as this one. But on the other side, it sprays quite aggressively and also it sprays out very little amount of product. So I feel like every time I was using this, I am spreading over 10 sprays on my face. And that's one. And two, even though it says, it says set, refresh, and hydrate, but what it actually do is only set. It don't refresh and it don't hydrate. If your skin are quite dry, I think this can dry out your skin a little bit. I have a normal skin type. It's not too oily, but it also is not too dry. I feel like a little bit of dryness in the middle of the winter. So this one in the middle of the winter can be a touch, just a touch dry for me. So if you are like desert dry skin, this one probably is not for you. For people other than that very desert dry skin, if you are asking for a setting spray that really sets your skin, that your skin, your makeup will not budge, not move. I think this one will really do a very impressive job for you. For the eyes, smaller palette favorite will definitely be the Suku Signature Color Eyes. My favorite one is 02. It's more of a peachy, like brown, kind of very basic color story. But I actually find it's a little bit unique for like this kind of color where it's not too peachy. It's not too warm to the point that it looks like a very yellowy orange, like like the orange I am wearing today. It's not like that. It's also not like a cool tone or a neutral. It's a little bit warmer than that. I think it's just nice balance of warmth and neutral color. It just looks so delicious and its formula is so nice. It's not a kind of formula that is super pigmented, but it's also not too sheer. If you want to use it in a very sheer way, you can, but you can also build it up to a kind of a medium pigmentation. It's just the best for me. I Sometimes I find myself using this non-stop every day. I love it so much. Not only this palette, every shade in this line I love. All of the limited edition color I love. I love them so much. Like these are the quads from the winter collection or the New Year's, I, I'm not sure. These cool toned colors are like some colors that I never think that I will enjoy, but I actually enjoy them so much. Don't know how they can come up all of these like very unique color story. Sometimes they even look very random. Like if you look at the palette, you will find it, the color story is like very random that you don't know what to do with them, right? But if you actually put it on your eyes, it looks so pretty. Like I, I just want to 
know how they come out with these kind of very special very random looking but actually works very nice kind of color story it's just genius i really love every one of the limited edition like this one is from the fall collection like all of these colors it looks like they will never work for each other but together they are so pretty looking i just love every one of them like this green i never find another green that's as pretty as this green is for the bigger palettes pat mcgrath palette i think this is the six every shade in this palette i enjoy and every shade just works for me and the formula on this palette is super nice and actually i have nothing to say other than this palette is just so good i enjoy this so much another bigger palette is the palette that I built myself. By the process of building my own palette, I rediscovered a lot of color that I love. And I also enjoyed my own collection a lot more than before. Every color in this palette is the color that I use and the color that I love, which almost never happens when you buy a big palette. I do in coverage everybody do this if you have a bigger eyeshadow collection like me i don't have a light eyeliner favorite because i find myself just using whatever i have but i do discover it a new mascara favorite in this year it's from kamek this one is the only mascara on earth that don't smudge on me every mascara that i have ever tried smudge on me the difference is just uh, some mascara smudge less and some mascara smudge more and believe me i have tried so many mascaras like everyone that's ever got super popular i i have tried all of them and i every one of them smudge and also most of them don't hold curl my, I have a very very straight downward kind of eyelash and most of them don't hold my curl but I do find Japanese drugstore mascaras holds my curl and smudge less but I never find any any mascara even in the Japanese drugstore that will not smudge on me and this is the only one that never smudged. I want to say it's a lengthening kind of mascara that it will coat every hair and make them a little bit longer. It's not a super volumizing mascara. It's the mascara that will enhance your natural eyelash, but it won't give you something that you don't have if that makes sense. So for the lips, actually because of the COVID, I, I don't find myself using a lot of my lip product because, not because other people won't see it because I don't really care, but because it will get onto the mask and it's, it's super gross. <laughs> so what I was using is mostly just a very sheer lip gloss that will add some color, but also it's mostly just to hydrate my lips because it gets very dry when you are wearing a mask. And what I used the most is this two. And this one is the brand three. It's the same brand with the face powder. It's the shimmering lip gem in the shade Cranberry Crunch. It looks like it's a very intense color, but it's actually not. It's very sheer. It just gives a little hint of color on your lip that looks really nice. I think this is the same concept as the very famous Black Honey Clinic lipstick. On your lip, it will look even more sheer. It looks nice. I am wearing makeup. I'm not wearing makeup. And what kind of makeup I'm wearing. It pairs well with all of them. 
and you can see how much I am using. I am almost out of it. And another one would be the Fenty Beauty, the original gloss balm formula. I used up the shade Fuzzy. I really love that color. And th because I used that one up, I'm just holding up this color. It just pairs well with like every kind of makeup that's cool toned. It's a thicker formula so that it lasts longer, but it's not sticky. It's very comfortable and it stays well. It doesn't um, emphasize the like texture on your lip and actually hydrates your lip. So that's what all I ask for for a lip gloss. The only thing is I don't like the taste of it. It has a, like a weird taste in the back of my throat every time I apply it. So I just make sure I don't apply too much of it so that I won't taste it. That's all of the makeup, but I do have two tools, makeup tools that I really enjoy. It's from Suku. It's their eyelash curler. I love this one. It's because of the angle. You can see it's a very, this curl is a very flat angle, not like other eyelash curler where it's like a much more like domed kind of curled angle. And for my Asian eyes, like in general, our Asian people has like flatter eye shape. A lot of eyelash curlers just don't fit on my eyes. And this one just fits like perfectly, hurting every one of my eyelash very evenly. And I have used this one definitely over five years and it still looks like it's new. And for a Suku product, it's not that expensive. I believe it's around 20 to $25 for a luxury brand. That's a reasonable price. Do think it's worth it if you never find a like flat enough eyelash color for your eye shape. Give it a try. Another tool that I really loved is an eyeshadow brush. It's the ColourPop brush. The number on this is E9, but I believe the name is Small Tapered Brush. This brush is my favorite eyeshadow brush. The length, the, the size, everything is perfect for my eye. The blending brush Western people usually use, they are so big. <laughs> I feel like I can use those to, to powder my face. This is from Zoeva. It's 228 Lux Crease Brush. So it is a crease brush. And you can see the size comparison. This one is much smaller. And this one on my eyes, like blogging my whole eye. I don't even know what I'm doing and I have no control on where the color is going. And for this one is it blends super nicely and I can see what I am doing and I have control. This brush is just perfect. A lot of time I find the eyeshadow brush is the same size as this one. Either the bristle will be too long that I lose some control or it's too dense that I won't blend very well or it's too fluffy that I don't have the grip that I want. It's like I never find an eyeshadow brush as like perfect as this one and I just bought five backup. I am really uh, afraid of ColourPop discontinue this line because they came out a lot of new brush bundles that is a lot more affordable than this line. It's just the perfect eyeshadow brush for me. I am talking over an hour. So yeah, thank you for watching. <laughs> Bye.